Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company accounting lesson. Um, in this video, we're going to be going over how to journalize treasury stock transactions. Now, as always, we do have blank sheets available on our website that you can print out and follow along. The link to that will be in the description. So when we're talking about treasury stock, we are referring to a corporation's own stock that is being reacquired by that corporation. So you'll notice that a lot of times when we're starting these treasury stock um, transaction problems, we are referring to the corporation buying back its own stock from the public. So let's take a look at this first one, uh, A. On February 14th, 2021, Emerald Incorporated reacquired 10,000 shares of its own $2 par common stock at $20 per share. So if we really want to uh, jump into the easy part of this, it would obviously be, well, uh, we're usually pretty familiar with cash. So you'll notice that we are purchasing this treasury stock in exchange for $20 per share for 10,000 shares. So let's analyze the cash part of this. So cash is obviously decreasing since we are spending money. Um, cash is an asset. And in order to make an asset decrease, we must credit that cash. So let's go ahead and start plugging everything in. So since debits come first, I'm going to skip a line and I'm going to credit my cash. And that's going to be 10,000 shares at $20 per share. So a total of $200,000. Now, as far as our debit, um, a lot of students are really tempted to uh, record this as common stock, but when a company is reacquiring their own shares, we actually use a special account called treasury stock. Now, treasury stock is a contra capital account. So when we say that the company's treasury stock is going up, remember if it is a contra capital, these signs flip, so a contra capital will increase with a debit and decrease with a credit. So when we say that we're going to be debiting treasury stock, we are actually making it go up. Now with treasury stock, it's very important to remember that treasury stock essentially ignores par value. So you'll notice when we discussed how to issue common and preferred stock, we said that common stock, preferred stock is always valued at par. Well, that is not the case for treasury stock. Treasury stock is always valued at cost. So in this case, if they paid $20 per share, that is what we are going to value that treasury stock at. So $20 times 10,000 shares, we're going to debit treasury stock for $200,000. And that's it for the uh, purchase transaction when we're reacquiring it. Now let's take a look at what it would look like once we decide to sell some of those shares. So on June 6th, 2021, we decide to sell 6,000 shares of the treasury stock that was previously reacquired. And we're now selling it for $24 per share. So you'll see that there is a little difference in the price there. So let's start with the easy part. Uh, we are selling this treasury stock for $24, which would be cash. So cash is going up, cash is an asset. So to make it go up, we will debit. So let's debit cash and we are receiving $24 per share for 6,000 shares. Now, as far as what we're selling, we are selling treasury stock. And just as a reminder, that is a contra capital account. So these signs are flipping. So to make it go down, we will credit treasury stock. And now we know that we're selling 6,000 shares, and keep in mind, what do we always value treasury stock at? We will always value treasury stock at cost. So in this case, these 10,000 shares that we purchased up here, we valued them at $20 per share. So now that we are selling them, we have to value them at $20 per share. So 6,000 shares at $20 per share, $120,000. So now you'll notice that we have a little bit of an issue here. It does not balance. So we're simply going to find the difference between those two. So we have a $24,000 credit plug. And the account that we use is going to be paid in capital from sale of treasury stock. 
And that's it. Uh, let's take a look at one more scenario having to do with selling. Uh, we have on June 29th, they're going to sell the remaining 4,000 shares of the treasury stock that was previously reacquired, but now they're only selling it for $19 per share. So it's actually a dollar less than what they previously reacquired them for. So just like before, we're going to debit cash to make it go up and we're selling 4,000 shares at $19 per share. Now, a little bit of a spoiler alert. I'm gonna skip this line because we are going to need one more debit. You'll see what I mean in a second. Now, as far as the treasury stock, it is going to be decreasing. And keep in mind, we're selling 4,000 shares and we always value treasury stock at cost. So how much did those shares previously cost us? $20 per share. So 4,000 shares times $20 per share. There we go. So now you can see when it's time to plug our account to make them equal, you'll notice that it's now going to become a debit plug. And what account are we going to use for that debit plug? Paid in capital from sale of treasury stock. And that's it. So important things to remember, um, essentially pay close attention to your debits and credits. Make sure that they do equal at the very end. Make sure that you are using the treasury stock account instead of some like common stock or maybe even preferred stock account. Make sure you're using the correct account and make sure that you always value treasury stock at cost. Now do keep in mind this does assume that your textbook is using the cost method. Um, this is usually the standard method that uh, introductory textbooks use, but keep in mind there is also a PAR method. So you're going to want to pay very close attention to which method your textbook is using. If you're using the cost method, you are good to go with this video. All right, and that will be it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy studying.